In the beginning, the people took care of the land, and the land took care of the people. In San Geronimo Valley, there were thousands of elk, antelope, and deer. There were towering stands of valley oaks for acorn, porridge, and bread. The creeks teemed with salmon. The waters were filled solidly with fish. And the native bunch grasses kept the hills green all year round. Cooley, the bear, lived here. Moloch, the mighty condor, with his 12-foot wingspan, cast shadows as he navigated on the air currents above. These first people, the Coast Miwok, the Tamalco, they lived peacefully along the creek throughout the valley for thousands of years until the colonizers came. To native people, the idea of owning land was absurd. No one owned the land. The land owned them. They were part of each other. But the colonizers thought differently. And over time, they began to divide and sell the valley. First, there were enormous land grants. And then in the mid-1840s, large rancherias. And finally, at the beginning of the 20th century, the largest subdivision in Marin County. It was a checkerboard of half acre to five acre plots in Wood Acre, and they were marketed to wealthy San Franciscans as in suburban farms. We considered that the San Geronimo Valley offered an extremely logical place for the growth of a new suburban community, said General Manager Harvey Toy. While the valley never became the suburban community Toy envisioned, that didn't stop other developers from trying. In 1964, the owners of San Geronimo Valley Properties opened a 157-acre members-only golf course in the same rich bottomland that Miwok people had called home for millennia. They planned to build houses on the 5,500 acres of land they owned surrounding the course. But in a time when the average annual income in Marin was $10,000, and probably less in the valley. The $2,500 membership fee was too steep for most people. Desperate to recoup some of their investment, the developers opened the course to the public in 1966, and so it remained for about 50 years. No longer home to native bunch grasses, the lush green of the fairways was maintained by siphoning 50 million gallons of water annually from our reservoirs. The golf course was one of the 10 largest water consumers in Marin. Thousands of pesticide applications over the years destroyed the natural healthy balance between pollinators and plants and between microbes and soil. So that one small group could benefit, the entire web of life suffered. Such disregard for both the land and the community as a whole would have been incomprehensible to the land's original inhabitants. Oh, sounds like trickery to me. Um, you know, old man Coyote, Oye Oyish, he was a great trickster, but uh, he did it a little bit differently. He was constantly intentionally throwing things out of balance, and through his stories, he taught Coast Miwok from the time that they were little children how important it was to the health of all life to be in balance. Today, we have a rare opportunity to restore this balance, right here on the land under the stewardship of its present owners, the Trust for Public Land, or TPL. A national nonprofit conservation organization, TPL's mission is to create parks and protect land for people, ensuring healthy, livable communities for generations to come. Here, they are working with a creek restoration partner, Trout Unlimited, to restore San Geronimo Creek's natural floodplain, giving endangered coho salmon a stronger chance to survive and thrive. Toxic pesticide use has given way to natural land management. And as people begin to care for the land again, the land can begin to take care of the people again. 
all people. Imagine accessible parkland in the heart of Marin for elders and those with limited mobility. Imagine an outdoor educational classroom for kids from throughout the county. Imagine land practices that help fight climate change. Imagine a place that welcomes baby strollers, kids on bikes, dog walkers, frisbee and croquet players, family picnickers, bird watchers, and more, with a community clubhouse open to activities and events of all kinds. But none of this will happen if Measure D on the upcoming March ballot passes. This mean-spirited initiative seeks to forbid any other use but golf. Ironically, it would not bring golf back. It would simply keep everything else out. Don't let a small, single-interest group block restoration and recreational benefits for all. Vote no on Measure D to permanently protect this special place for everyone. In 1964, real estate developer Robert Romagir was closely allied with the golf course owners. In 1972, he was appointed to the Board of Supervisors and re-elected five times. In this position, he helped create the Marin Open Space District and protect hundreds of acres of Marin County ridgelines. People change. Times change. And it's time to vote no on Measure D. For the good of the land and the good of the community. As the Coast Miwok people say, Mukoyem kai ni iko, all my relations. We are all connected. <laughs>